Hi, and here's a short video tutorial on how we use uh, masks and image masks within Motion 5. So uh, this is a final example of the type of thing that I've produced. Uh, this kind of head-up display here. And you can see that we've got these um, moving gauges. And uh, we're actually um, producing this effect by using some image masks. And I'm going to show you how uh, we created this gauge here at the bottom, for example. So over here in Motion 5, you can see this is my uh, gauge here, and I can alter the the uh, the the, uh, the gauge reading by by moving this um, mask up and down. So uh, let's create a new uh, motion project. So we'll go file and new, and we'll create a motion project there. Ten seconds long is enough. Okay. And into group one here, we're going to import, first of all, uh, a graphic that I've already made. Um, and I made it in another um, piece of software called Pixelmator. So here is our basic outline there. Let's just close this and zoom in on there. Okay, so now I've got this outline here. I'm going to change this uh, group name here just to keep our project tidy. To outline and we can remove that other group right now we'll create a new group here and we'll call this mask and what we're going to want to do is draw into the mask group a rectangle so we'll grab our rectangle tool here and we'll draw this in so it covers uh, our um, outline and we'll go to our fill mode, we'll go to gradient, and we'll change this gradient from uh, red to green. Okay. And now I'm going to want to rotate this uh, square around uh, 90 degrees to the right. Um, let's make it minus 90, so the red is on the right hand side. Yep. Uh, okay, and now we'll um, change the shape here. We just want to adjust that a little bit um, because it's the wrong size now. So we'll go to our scale here and let's scale it down in that direction and we'll scale it up in this direction and then let's move it over our cube here. Okay, now uh, in our shape properties, I want to in the geometry um, style is it in style I want to increase our feathering a little bit so let's feather that that gives us this uh, gradiated edge there um, and then let's drag this back a little bit to there okay so that's approximately where we're going to want our gauge all right um, so once we've done this, we can hide that layer for the moment. And what we want to do now is draw a trace around that edge. So we'll pick up our Bezier tool here. And we just want to trace around the inner lines of this. So we can just do it roughly to start with. And then we'll go in and tidy up these points afterwards. So roughly following the inside of our white outline. And here, okay. Now we'll just zoom in a little bit and we'll manipulate these points. You can hold down the control key, uh, the, sorry, the command key, and it allows us to drag it without the s snapping. So we don't want this to snap into position. You see the yellow snap lines there? We hold down the command key. It allows us to move it around without that snapping. So we can line everything up so that we have a uh, the edge here. Like this, okay. And then we need to add another point into the middle here. So we'll double click on that edge there. Let's get up there. Okay, and then we can drag this point also, hold on the command key so it's curved here. If it doesn't come up uh, curved, it's here. So you can right click and you can change from linear to smooth and that'll make it curved. This one looks almost...
almost pretty good. So there and there. Let's go over to here. So let's drag these around. Just to line everything up nicely. So once you've done this, oh, well, you need to add another point here because this is curved. Mm -hmm. Let's change up the linear while we move it. Actually, why is that doing that? Hold on. Yeah, okay. And we'll change it to smooth. So once you've finished going around doing all this, I'm sorry about the length of time this is taking me. Okay, pretty much I'm happy with that. That's all good. All right, so once we've got this, let's just tidy this up down here a little bit. Okay, so once we've got this done, um, this now will form the outline of our mask. So we'll, we'll make our rectangle visible again. We select the rectangle, right click on it, and we go to add image mask. And once we've done that, we drag our outline that we just drew into the mask source. And there we go. That now creates our image mask there. Okay. So now we can uh, resize our rectangle a little bit so that we have our faded edge here on the left. So let's go over to our um, properties of our rectangle and we'll transform the scale a little bit so we can move this around. So we'll have that there and here. Okay, and then we want to make this layer behind the outline layer, so we'll just drag it down. And there we go. So that is how the uh, image mask works, and it allows us to then put this, um, uh, this uh, gradiated shape behind our front layer there. So basically we've got a stack of, of layers there. All right, and then we're, what we're going to do then is uh, come into our um, Bezier here and we'll grab our mask tool and we draw that in. And let's put it to the right hand side here. And then we're going to increase on our mask the feather amount. So that's quite high like that. And then quite simply, we can uh, manipulate our scale just by dragging or resizing this um, mask like that. So if we animate this property, then it will give us the, the moving gauge. So quite simply, if we want the gauge to go from, say, zero up to the top, so let's open up um, our movie editor there. So you can see here's our outline and our mask. So we're going to add keyframes to animate this mask that we just drew. So when we drag this, what we're manipulating is the scale factor, okay? So we're scaling it on the x-axis. So all we have to do is just basically change this x scale and it will move our thing. So we'll animate that as a keyframe. So here in uh, frame number one, we will add a keyframe there. And let's go up, let's say, to frame number two. So that would be 30 frames. Um, uh, sorry, if we go to um, 30 frames, which will be one second. And we'll drag this out, like so. And that should animate now our scale. Let's watch that. There, but you see it's growing from the middle, not from the outside. So... Let's go back to the beginning here and we want to reposition our scale over there. Now let's try this. And there we go. Okay, so we want to drag this out a little bit more. Alright. 
back to that keyframe again. Let's drag this up higher. There we go. So that's that's about good. So there's our keyframe animation. So basically, we've combined um, two masks here. We've got a mask which provides our animation, and then we've got an image mask um, which we drew, um, which we've used to basically like a cookie cutter. Uh, you can think of that mask as like a, a cutter, and it's going to cut out that shape from our original um, uh, rectangle. So if we turn that mask off, um, then we get our original shape there, you see? So all this mask, the image mask is doing is masking around the outside of there. Now, uh, if we were to invert this mask, if we go over to the image mask and go to, um, if we were to invert it um, here, invert mask, you see it does the opposite. So we still get that animation effect, but we're having the opposite effect with our mask. So that's not obviously what we want for this gauge. Um, so there we go. That's basically it. That's a brief introduction to masking techniques and how they can be used in a real world application using Motion 5. If you found this useful, please hit the like button and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can go over to my blog and keep up to date there with all my latest tutorials for Final Cut Pro and also Motion 5. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.